Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I got a beautiful roasted quail dish for you. We're going to do it over in the Dutch oven and we're going to make our side a recipe right out of the Texas treasury of Dutch oven cooking. This is put together by the Lone Star Dutch Oven Society out in Texas. So y'all stay tuned. Like I said, we're going to roast some quail. That's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to brown them off with just a little bit of bacon grease to start with. And we're going to, then we're going to flip them over skin side up, the lid on there, roast them for 25 minutes until they're about 160 to 165 uh, internal temperature. That's going to be the easy part. So I was looking for something that would go really good with this dish. And I found here in the, uh, the treasury of Dutch oven cooking uh, cookbook, Appreciate uh, you guys over there at the Lone Star um, Dutch Oven Society for sending this over here. Uh, I know it's been a while I've had it that I haven't done a, a recipe out of it, but there's so many good recipes in this cookbook. If you're a Dutch oven cook, you need to get this cookbook, and I'll try to leave you a link where you can get a hold of these guys and get your own copy. But the dish we decided to do with our quail is called Celtic Potatoes, and hey, St. Patty's Day coming up, right? So I thought that was very interesting, and I looked at the ingredients, I'm like, I bet you that tastes really good. And that recipe comes from Shimray Jr. and Shimray III in Sulphur Springs, Texas. I'm going to give you guys uh, the shout out right here for this recipe we're going to make today. Now he made it a big 14-inch, uh, you know, for a gathering kind of thing or whatever, but we're going to scale that down. We're going to do about a quarter of, his, of this recipe for here, because if... You guys have been watching us all. You know, we've been trying to cook low carb lately and uh, I've lost about 40 pounds in the process. But today's gonna be cheat day because it's got a bunch of red potatoes in it. Don't go nowhere. These are farm raised, okay? I didn't, uh, I don't have no uh, quail dog or much of a place to even go after quail. I did kill a couple this year. I already ate the few I got. I got these farm raised and we'll give them a try. I've seasoned both sides. Seminole swamp season. We're using the uh, fire in the swamp today. Give them a little kick. So what we want to do is we want to brown that meat side or that skin side real quick and then we'll flip them over. And uh, rebooting here because I think I'm gonna to have to these legs are going to go long I think I might have to use the 12 inch on the quail and use the 10 inch on the potatoes uh, maybe not I might be able to use the 12 inch to brown them and then move them over to the 10 to bake the baking part but either way we got both ovens hot so let's go so get I got it about uh, half a chimney of Weber in my Weber charcoal chimney there this is Kingsford again, Hickory. I think I got this because it was like half price. All right, use your favorite. We're gonna fire up and preheat two Dutch ovens uh, at the same time here today, but we want good bottom heat for those to get started. So I'm just gonna take those and spread them out loosely so they can get some airflow through there. And then we're gonna put in our number 12 and our number 10 and let them start getting hot. So this is uh, both of these dishes like every other good Dutch oven dish are going to start out with bacon. Let's drop that one in the ashes. We'll wash them off though. So I'm going to go ahead and get, uh, going to do our quail over here in the 10 inch shallow. We'll start it off with about three or four strips. Start with three. And over in the 12, let's just throw it in there. It's easier to separate it once it's in the pot and gets warmed up. And what we're doing over here is just rendering this out. out. I'm going to give you the full recipe for the Celtic potatoes. 
at the end of the video I'll scroll all those ingredients there for you and if you want to forget the technique behind it which is pretty simple you shouldn't uh, then you can go back and watch the video again see when we put what in and so forth alright but every good Dutch oven dish starts out with some good old bacon yes boy now we're gonna crisp this up over here in the 12 where our potatoes are going and we'll probably do the same thing over here the other one so what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna brown them I can get about one maybe two over there I'll switch them get two in there I'm gonna do two over here And then we'll uh, we'll try to get what we'll can go to bacon. We're gonna draw off a little bit once it's brown here. We'll get all of them in a the tin. So I need this space for that potato dish. It's a lot. Getting that time of day where you're know, starting to get these shadows. See, I got it starting to get a little brownness on that skin there. Alright, that's about the way I want them to look. We'll see how we can get all four of them in there. I think we can do them just like that. These over to the other Dutch oven. That's going to help try to. Pick some of that leg meat, maybe. Just barely fit four of them in there. All right, I'm gonna pull this Dutch oven over here off for a minute. We'll get this one set with some top heat. So I'm setting up for 350 on the quail. All right, go ahead and get our lid. That means we want 13 on the top. So I'm out here trying to film this week's episode, but I have this little girl right here gnawing at the uh, toy at my feet and squeaking it and whatever and interrupting the video. So we have to do a couple takes over, but uh, this is Cabela. She's our new puppy and she's a Morky. I think she's more Yorky than Morky. And right now she's an ankle nipper. But uh, we'll break her from that. Want to say hi to everybody? Say hi, Cabela. Say hi. Say hi. Alright, I'm going to return my number 12 back over to bottom heat. I don't want that getting too hot because the next thing we got to do is sweat down some onions and garlic. Alright, there is a half a cup chopped sweet onion and four cloves of garlic. And we don't want to brown these, we just want to cook them until they're translucent. And you know, if it starts getting too hot, guys, all right. If you got too much fire under there using campfire may be even more of a problem just pull that oven off just pull it off it's gonna keep cooking with the heat that's already in it you can intermittently set it on on and off the fire if it starts getting too hot on you so don't be afraid just pull it off set it over side and yeah. when it gets tamed down stick it back on there back up on there for a little while 
just as easy okay, as So that. I just pulled the, the Dutch oven off for a minute so I could get my tin coals on the bottom. So number 12, I wanted to bump it up just a little bit, but one in the center. And the reason that uh, for that is I'm fixing to put in a bunch of cold potatoes in there. So in goes, that's two pounds of red potatoes. And if you're gonna make this dish right, you need them red potatoes. All right. Just gonna get them down in there and get them all married up with that bacon grease, garlic, onions. Thoroughly mixed through there. All right, now we're gonna add some seasonings. Coming in with this about a teaspoon or so, tablespoon of this is a sprinkle. Just I don't know what the measurement is. It's a sprinkling of fresh dill. Got that in there, and then of course we want some salt and pepper. I already have a salt and pepper mix here. I'm gonna give that a good two, three pinches. Don't want to get it overly crazy on this salt. But everybody knows that potatoes ain't fit to eat without no salt on them. So now I'm just going to get them all in there, get it all sticking to each other. Oh, God, it looks so good already. Um, all right. Spread out evenly. Let's get the lid back on. Let's find out what I did with it. lids on her and we'll take what few coals we got there spread them out on top eventually yep about time to fire about another few coals these guys are getting really small this tater is going to take a little while so Here's the point in time, if you're trying to follow what I'm doing, you need to go ahead and fire up some more coals. Let's go check on our quail. It's smelling pretty good. They're rotating that pot too because it's a little out of level. Jesus running over to one side. So I'm going to go in and uh, give a quick little probe of them. Yeah, they're done, really tender. I want to brown them a little bit, and what I'm going to do to help that is I have 50 50 pomegranate juice and honey. And we're just going to start basting them with that a little bit. Man, that fire is hot. Alright. Let's give them a good baste. I want to do now is take the heat off the bottom. So all I'm going to do is uh, set it over here side. Scoop those few little babies that were under there out. Let's put her back on. I just added some new coals to the top. We'll add maybe one more big one. Okay. All right. See if we can set that glaze. So what I've done here for the last couple of minutes, I just crack that lid, let the steam out. See if I can get a little brownness on them. And it has. Let's go in and take a look. Yeah, I know the shadows are getting bad. Just try to like crisp up that skin a little bit. So on our Celtic potatoes, it's been about 10 minutes. This, the recipe says to go ahead and cook these till they're tender. So it doesn't actually say to put the lid on it. Um, but I figured out maybe speed up this process and they're getting there. There's plenty of heat on the bottom. I bring in some more coals on the bottom. I'll try to get a little bit of browning on them. A little browning on top. We got it up to about 400. Might even add a few more just to facilitate 
And since I got this big row of coals here sitting in the middle, I might go ahead and spin that also. Keep that pot temperature even. All right. Give that a few right, more so those potatoes are done. So right now we're gonna go ahead and start putting in the rest of the ingredients. The Celtic potatoes. So I just checked the cookbook and it said I was supposed to take these off and let them cool slightly. So I'll just go ahead and set them off to the side over here. Let them cool down for a few minutes. I could use a break anyway. Okay, so next step dish. I let it cool off a minute. I reset the coals, just a few under there. I'm going to kind of modify the cook time here on the, the original recipe because that was for eight pounds of potatoes and we only got two. Okay, but well, we won't skip on. We'll still use the original amount of bacon, of course, obviously. We wouldn't let any of that go by. So let's get some cheese. They used uh, sharp and regular cheddar. I don't have either on hand, so we're gonna use Cheddar Jack, which I really like. And I'll cover that bad boy up. Just it up here a little bit. I guess I'm gonna put what we got in there. All right. Now I moved uh, almost all the coals I had over there to the top. I want that to go pretty quick because them taters are done. Nothing in there needs more cooking except that cheese. So we'll get that done pretty okay, quick. It's been about six or seven minutes. We'll go and take a look. That's cooked down really nice. I see some of the cheese is browning down the bottom of cast iron. At this point, taking it off. Let's go ahead and bring in some of our uh, cheesy Celtic potatoes right in there. Oh my gosh, those look awesome. Gonna go ahead and garnish them just a little bit with some uh, green onion. Um, also, this was uh, in the recipe to garnish it with a little bit of sour cream. I have some uh, some sour cream onion dip. I'm gonna go ahead and give that just a little bit of that. Thought that would be pretty dang awesome on it. All right, let's go ahead and bring in one of our quail. Right there. Right, it's nice and brown. And then. We reduced some of our sauce down. Our pomegranate. Just gonna dribble that around the plate a little bit, make a little dipping sauce there for it. And uh, just for giggles, a little bit of parsley. So, there you go. Got some uh, Celtic potatoes from the Texas Treasury. A Dutch oven cooking with a baked quail from the Backwoods Gourmet. So I'm going to leave you a link in the description box below of how you can get your own copy of the Texas Treasury of Dutch oven cooking. This is the best Dutch oven cookbook. I've ever found and believe me you're gonna to want to make every single dish in this book so uh, let's go in there and check on some of that quail got me a nice leg right there mmm that pomegranate mmm 
honey sauce really comes through on that you want some of that I know you do mm. Wow let's go in and check on try some of these uh, Celtic potatoes Wow cheesy garlicky That dill. So if you're looking for an alternative to your St. Patrick's Day dish, other than the uh, great corned beef and cabbage we made, I'm gonna leave you a link to that right up here in the end screen. But if you're looking for something else to do, if you got some quail this year, Give this a try, you'll be glad you did. So if you like what we're doing, please smash the like button right down there. You can subscribe to our channel right over here for another great Backwoods Gourmet video. It's gonna be right up there. And for our whole playlist, Cast Iron Dutch Oven Cooking, it's gonna be right up here. We'll see you next time.